Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find close to 700 articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, ARMP, we're the co-authors of the three-category number one Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, a guide for when medical help is not on the way. Also, the New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of a board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get the whole gang together to put down those smartphones and have a fun family game night. Now, summer's almost here, and with school done for the year, many of our nation's families will be traveling on vacation to the beach, lake, or other waterfront areas. It's also a season where a lot of mishaps occur, and one of the most harrowing and heartbreaking is drowning. According to a 2004 report from the World Health Organization, drowning is the third leading cause of death from injury. From 2005 to 2009, there were an average of close to 4,000 drownings annually in the United States. Non-fatal submersion injuries are about five times greater, and some of these involve brain injury, and these tend to be long-term. Drowning is seen much more often in males, and the younger the person, the higher the rate of risk. It's also the second leading cause of death from injuries in children 1 to 14 years old, surpassed only by car wrecks. There are a number of factors which increase the rate of drowning. Poor swimming ability. Simply put, if you can't swim, your chances of drowning increase. Poor supervision. Drowning can occur relatively quickly and without a lot of noise. Even the presence of lifeguards may not save you on the beach, and unsupervised small children could die even in the bathtub. Location. Although home swimming pools are the most likely places that young people drown, most adult drowning events occur in natural boating or wilderness settings. Barriers, or lack of them. Pool fences that separate the pool from the yard reduce a child's risk of drowning by 83%. Life jackets. 88% of boating deaths by drowning involve people who weren't wearing their vests. Alcohol. The majority of deaths by drowning in adolescents and adults involve impaired judgment and coordination caused by, yes, drinking. And seizure disorders. Drowning, often in the bathtub, is one of the most common causes of death by injury for those with a seizure disorder or epilepsy. Here are some things you should know to keep your family safe from a drowning accident. Take swimming lessons. Don't go into swimming death water if you don't know how to swim. Swimming lessons are provided by many municipalities throughout the country, even for very young children. So are CPR classes, which are very important when it comes to aiding drowning victims. Keep supervision on minors, strict supervision. Children in the water should always be supervised by a responsible, sober adult. For preschool children, the adult should be close enough to touch the child and not involved in any other activity. Utilize the buddy system. Everyone, even adults, should always swim with another person or persons. On the beach, beware rip currents. Know the meaning of those advisory flags that they have on beaches. High waves, discolored water, debris, channels of water moving away from shore. Those are signs of dangerous conditions. If you're caught in a rip current, swim parallel to shore. Don't fight it. Swim parallel to shore until free and then diagonally towards the beach. Foam or inflatable toys don't take the place of life jackets. Noodles and water wings aren't acceptable as substitutes for life vests, especially on boating trips. Be firm, even with adults, about using the right equipment. Pool fencing saves lives. Four-sided fencing, four feet high with a high latch and a lock, that's the safest way to avoid small children falling or jumping into the pool and getting into trouble. Don't leave tempting toys near the pool after swimming either. Be aware of the weather. Thunder showers often whip up the water with strong winds, increasing the risk of drowning. Be physically fit. Swimming involves exertion. Make sure you're up to the challenge. Don't drink alcohol. Any water activity is more dangerous both to you and the children you supervise if you're drinking. Don't hyperventilate. Taking rapid deep breaths for a contest to see who can stay underwater longest may cause a blackout. That's something you don't want to happen when you're submerged. Use the shower, not the bathtub, if you suffer from a seizure disorder. Any swimming activity in those cases should be done only with one-on-one -on -one supervision. 
and in the wilderness, be wary at river crossings. Fast moving water can knock you off your feet, even if it's just a foot deep or even less. At the beach or in the wilderness, you might encounter a distressed person in the water. Now your first response is going to be to jump in and help, but remember that the hazards that got that person in trouble in the first place, they're probably still there. Also, they'll likely be panicking and flailing around. Now to avoid injury and reduce the risk that you'll become the next victim, remember these words, reach, throw, row, go. Reach out to the person with a stick or oar. Throw the person a lifeline, life preserver, or other floating object. Row out to the person in a canoe or other boat if available. Go into the water only when there is no other option. In circumstances where you encounter a person in trouble in the water, consider the drowning chain of survival. Follow this series of steps and it will give you the best chance of a good outcome. Shout for help. Remove the person from the water in a safe manner as we just talked about. In normal times, call emergency medical services. Begin CPR using both chest compressions and rescue breathing. Chest compressions alone are insufficient for drowning victims. If available, use an automated external defibrillator, an AED, and assist in transport to a modern medical facility if they exist. Outcomes worsen significantly in an austere environment. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, are you ready to deal with medical issues in a disaster? With the Survival Medicine Handbook, you'll get a head start on keeping it together even if everything else falls apart. Available at Amazon.com or on our website at www.doomandbloom.net.